Hi there. So I found this really nice CSS demo on CodePen the other day, and I thought it's been a really long time since I did one of these videos where I try and use the dev tools in Firefox to try and analyze a CSS demo like that. So I thought today would be the day. So let's take a look. So that CSS demo is pretty amazing. It's kind of a toggle button where you can switch between AM and PM, and the animation in the center is just really cute. It goes from a moon with a star uh, sky night uh, to a sun and some clouds there. And it's all very well animated, like the transition is really, really nice. I found that on CodePen, it's done by Benjamin Retoré. And uh, let's go right in. So I'm gonna change the view to the full page mode in CodePen and I'm gonna inspect that element in the center and see what's happening there. Oh, before I do that, actually, let me go back to the editor view. There's something that I want to take a look at. So there's no JavaScript on that page whatsoever. So everything's done. When you click on the button, there is no JavaScript being called. And so the transition from one state to another to the other m might be done um, differently. So let's go back to the full page now and inspect that element in the center. All right, so we looks like we have an input checkbox, which might be what's going on here. It's actually out of view. If you if you look here, um, it's absolutely positioned far left outside of the screen area, so we don't see it. But there's a label here, as you can see, and it's for DN, which is the ID. And by the way. Uh, when you see an underlying element here in Firefox DevTools, it, that means that's a link. So if I right click here, I can select element DN and it will jump here. So in that case, it's pretty obvious because the element is right before the label. But in some cases, you could have, like the, the input could be somewhere else in the DOM and you might not see it. So that's pretty useful. Okay, so we have a label and because it's linked to the input with a for attribute, whenever you click on the input, then the checkbox gets checked or unchecked. And so that's probably what's happening here. And I'm I'm guessing that they're using the checked pseudo class in, in CSS to be able to, um, to do that. So for example, if we click on that element here, you see here that there's an input column check, which is the pseudo class that represents the state checked of that input. And then it applies some styling depending on the checkbox um, status. So that's what's going on. That's why there's no need for any JavaScript there whatsoever. But what's more interesting to me here is the actual animation that's going on here. So we can see that there's a few elements, uh, stars. Okay, so each of these dots here have their own um, element here in the DOM. The toggle handler class element seems to be the moon here. Uh, it has craters element in it. We have a before, which is the AM, and after, which is the PM indicator. Mm, okay, so let's take a look at the animation panel now. Let's focus on the label element here. Uh, just before I start the animation here, what I want to say is I'm using a Firefox version that I'm working on currently locally, which, so you might see new things that haven't been um, released yet. So let's play the animation. All right, so we see a bunch of stuff happening now. Um, so the toggle element has had its background color changed. We can replay the animation backwards just to see it more easily. So we see all the elements that are moving. So first thing we see is that three of the stars, these ones here, are actually becoming um, the clouds here. And that's really nice. That's what, that's one of the things that gives this animation this really smooth, silky, you know, um, aspect. It's not like the stars disappear and then the, the clouds appear. It's like the stars actually become the clouds and that's really nice. So let's focus on them. So the star, so if I'm clicking here on the star one, that's gonna actually select that element in the DOM here. And therefore I'm only seeing the animations for 
that star. And I can play, you see, I can play the animation only for that element if I want to. So we can see right away that what's happening is that it's a transition. We can see it in the tooltip here. So the height and the width are being transitioned with a CSS transition that has no delay, lasts for 300 milliseconds, and repeats just one time. If we click, and that's the thing that you won't see in the normal Firefox version, that's the thing that I'm working on. We can see the uh, keyframes now. So the height is being transitioned from 0% to, no, sorry, from two pixels to three pixels. Maybe it's just because the tooltip is broken here, right? Yeah, 30 pixels. Um, all right, so that explains the stars. That's good. Uh, star two is probably the same. Well, there's one more property here, as you can see. On top of having its width and height being transform, uh, being transitioned, we also have a transform with the translate 3D, as you can see. So it's being translated by five pixels, and that gives it just this little bit more um, effect when you go from one state to the other, which is nice. The star three is probably the same thing, and then we have star four. Okay, so. 4, 5, and 6, these ones, actually, if we click to play the whole thing again, these ones, they just disappear. So let's keep number 4 selected and let's play the animation. And now we can see that it has an opacity and transform transition. You can see that's the small one up there, here. If I go back. Alright, so it's being the opacity is moving from 0 to 1 and the transform like 3 pixels being moved uh, to make it appear you know really nicely in the view okay I'm guessing that 5 let's play it again 5 is the same opacity and transform and 6 and 6 as well Opacity and transform. Oh, one thing that I didn't say is you see this area, dashed area here, which is a little bit different than the one we saw before. That's the delay. Um, if we again hover over the opacity of animation, you can see the tooltip and it says that it's a CSS transition. It has a delay of 0 0.40 seconds here. So that's why, you know, it needs to appear a little bit after the rest of the animation has played. All right, so that's it for the stars. We now know what's going on there. Uh, the toggle handler. Okay, so the toggle handler, uh, it contains three craters element, which are just three small elements. We can see here, they're just having their opacity being, tra being transitioned as well. So it's really similar to the stars, like it's going from 0% to, to, from zero to one, sorry, um, and as we can see, the craters, they just appear and disappear. They don't stay at the same place because the thing is they are part of this toggle handler element and that, that one is moving left to right and right to left. So that's why you see the craters are just following along in the element and, and actually maybe if we just go and change the pace to 0.1 um, speed and we play again, we can see it like a lot better. You can see the craters are disappearing, disappearing, and then and then the, the moon is turning into a sun while rotating to the left here. Um, all right, so that's it for them. Uh, one thing is you can see this lightning bolt here on some of the animations, not all of them. Uh, that means, and that's what written here at the bottom of the tooltip is this animation is running on a compositor thread. That means that if you're using some of the CSS properties in your animations, you have a guarantee that the animation is actually gonna run a lot smoother than if you were using other properties. And in that case, you're, the animation is using opacity and transforms as well here. And so these things are actually handled in a separate thread 
um, in the browser, not in the same main thread that everything else running on. And so if you have a lot of JavaScript running, then the main thread is actually occupied doing other things, and so your animation actually might be janky. But if your animation can run on the compositor, then there's nothing that will block it from running smoothly. And in that case, the animating the transform property and the opacity properties works in that way. And that's what the icon means. All right, so I guess the last thing here is the toggle handler element itself, which is which has two animation, uh, sorry, two transition, the background color, which is going from something to something else. And we can see here that is basically a very pale yellow color when it's the moon and it goes to a much brighter, almost orange color uh, when it's the sun, which is nice. And then the, the, the other one is the transform property. Maybe just to take a look at the transform better, what we can do is we can use the CSS transform previewer uh, in the DevTools, which is something we have. Whenever you see a transform property in the rules view here, if you just move your mouse over the value, it will highlight something in the page. What you see here is in green is the original position and shape of the element before it was transformed, and the blue one is the current state. So if you just, sorry, if you change it to the moon and you see a new transform here, you can also move your mouse here and you will see it's different. Um, uh, there was one last thing that I wanted to show you. Oh yeah, the um, timing function, which I've already demoed in previous videos, but I think it's quite important here to, to take a look at it because one of the things that makes this animation so good is that the, the way the, um, the sun becomes the moon and the way that it rotates to the right and back to the left is actually crucial. That's what gives it its you know, unique feeling. And if you look at it closely, you will see that it, it's not like really, it's not a linear movement. Um, it goes a little bit further, almost outside of the area, and then it comes back, kind of in bouncing to the, to the edge. Uh, and we can see that that's using the uh, transition, if we expand here, transition timing functions. That's the longhand property. Um, and we can click here to see what's going on. And immediately we see, okay, that's using a bouncy kind of a, kind of a curve here. So what you can see here is that on that graph, um, you have the time here and the progression of the animation. And instead of being a purely linear progression where through time, the animation just goes from point zero to point one at the same pace all the time here. Sorry, let's me go back to the backwards. Here, you're basically going backwards first and then really quickly to the end and even further away, like you go too far and then you go back at the end of the animation. So that's what's going on. If we, if we select the linear and then we click here, it's okay, but it's not as nice, you know? So definitely a good choice using the backwards um, cubic Bezier here. All right, I think that's it. We've definitely learned how that animation was done. And I think it's pretty smart. And we've seen quite a few things using the Firefox DevTools. So that's good. Thanks for watching.